Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about the sulfonyl ureas. What are the sulfonyl ureas? Sulfonyl ureas are oral hypoglycemic agents. These drugs are going to be used to control the glucose levels in the diabetic patients. Among the oral hypoglycemic agents, sulfonyl ureas are one class of drugs which can increase the insulin release thereby they can control the glucose levels within the blood. So these sulfonyl ureas are having a common structure like this and here you can observe this is nothing but the sulfonyl group which is attached with a phenyl ring in most of the compounds and this sulfonyl group is further attached with another group this group is nothing but the urea. So sulfonyl group is attached with the urea so that's why they are called as sulfonyl ureas and these sulfonyl ureas are having some structural similarity with the sulfonamides. Sulfonamides are also having the benzene ring which is attached with the sulfonamide moiety. But here this nitrogen is further attached with the other groups such that amide is now converted into urea. So sulfonyl ureas are mainly used as oral hypoglycemic agents. And within this general structure we can observe different groups are present on the phenyl ring as well as on the nitrogen of the urea. So based on this we have different types of sulfonyl ureas. So sulfonyl ureas can be classified into first generation as well as second generation. First generation is the old generation sulfonyl ureas including chlorpropamide and tolbutamide. So these are the only two drugs in the first generation and these drugs are nowadays little used because of less potency and short duration of action. And tolbutamide is only one of the drugs that still in the clinical use. Similarly second generation drugs are the gliburide and glipizide and glimepiride. This glyburide is also known as glibenclamide. So these are the second generation sulfonyl ureas. Now let us see how these sulfonyl ureas are acting like oral hypoglycemic agents. The main target of the sulfonyl ureas is the beta cells or B cells of the pancreas. So from these beta cells insulin is going to be released which is going to control the glucose levels within the plasma. But in order to release the insulin from the beta cells, one of the important stimulant required is the glucose. So when the glucose levels within the plasma are excessively increased, it can stimulate the beta cells to release the insulin. How this process takes place? The glucose can be taken into the beta cells through one of the transporter, GLUT2 transporter. So this is a transporter for the uptake of the glucose into the beta cells. And we can also observe another transporter GLUT4 which is responsible for the uptake of the glucose into the other cells. Now here in the pancreatic beta cells the glucose can be taken through these GLUT2 receptors. Then once the glucose is presented within the beta cells it can be phosphorylated to the glucose 6-phosphate by one of the important enzyme hexokinase. Now after phosphorylation glucose is activated. So glucose 6-phosphate can further undergo oxidation such that it can release the ATP molecules. So just like the glycolysis, now the glucose can release the ATP molecules which are controlling the insulin release. When the glucose levels are excessively increased in the plasma, they are more uptaken into the beta cells so that they are more converted into the ATP molecules resulting in the increased levels of ATP molecules within the beta cells. So these ATP molecules can control the outflow of the potassium channels. Normally potassium ions can go through these potassium channels such that they produce a hyperpolarization. But these potassium channels are controlled by ATP that's why they are called as ATP sense to potassium channels. Now ATP can bind to these potassium channels such that they are going to inhibit the activity of potassium channels. Thereby potassium ions cannot go outside. And when the potassium is not going outside the beta cells facilitate the another type of ion channels. These are the calcium channels. Now the calcium can enter through these calcium channels into the beta cells. And because of entry of calcium, the beta cells are going to be depolarized and they can promote the release of the insulin. In this way, insulin is going to be released by calcium mediated depolarization of the beta cells. And this depolarization is facilitated by block of the ATP sense to potassium channels. In this way, Excessive levels of the glucose within the plasma can release the insulin from the beta cells by increasing the ATP levels and this ATP can block the ATP sense to potassium channels. Now let us see how these sulfonyl ureas are going to act. 
Sulfonyl ureas are having a different binding site which is associated with the ATP sense to potassium channels. So these are the sulfonyl urea receptors. Which are the synthetic receptors? On these receptors, synthetic molecules like the sulfonyl ureas can only act. Now these drug molecules can bind to these sulfonyl urea receptors. Thereby they can inhibit the ATP sense to potassium channels. In this way, sulfonyl ureas are just acting like the ATP and they can inhibit the ATP sense to potassium channels. Thereby they increase the depolarization of the beta cells resulting in the increased release of the insulin. That's why sulfonyl ureas are beta cell dependent. When the beta cells are intact and not damaged only, sulfonyl ureas can increase the insulin release and they can control the glucose levels. What are the pharmacological actions? So what we have seen one of the action, these drugs are going to block the ATP sense to potassium channels, thereby they increase the insulin release from the beta cells. So this is mainly responsible for control of the glucose within the plasma. And again, because of this mechanism, sulfonyl ureas can increase the insulin levels within the plasma, which may result in the hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia is one of the important side effect of sulfonyl ureas. And second important action of the sulfonyl ureas is to decrease the hepatic glucose production. As they are going to promote the insulin release, this insulin can also reduce the hepatic glucose production. So sulfonyl ureas can inhibit the hepatic glucose production. And third one, the increase in the insulin sensitivity. These drugs can also increase the insulin sensitivity to a little extent. So they are not only increasing the insulin release, they are also increasing the insulin sensitivity. So these are the three important actions of the sulfonyl ureas by which they control the glucose levels within the plasma. What is the effect on cardiovascular system? We have seen that sulfonyl ureas are going to block the ATP sense to potassium channels which are present on the beta cells and this is responsible for the release of the insulin which controls the glucose levels within the plasma. But at the same time these sulfonyl ureas can block the another type of uh, ATP sense to potassium channels which are present on the heart. And these ion channels are also responsible for the hyperpolarization but when these ion channels are blocked cardiac muscle is uh, excessively stimulated which may result in fear of the cardiovascular disorders. Even these uh, cardiovascular effects are not observed for a short term use but when these drugs are used for the long term they can increase the mortality rate by producing the cardiovascular disorders. But still this mechanism is not clear whether sulfonyl ureas are going to produce this mortality through this ATP sense to potassium channels or by another mechanism. What are the side effects? The important side effect of sulfonyl ureas is the hypoglycemia. So all we have seen they are going to increase the insulin release thereby they can induce the hypoglycemia. And particularly this hypoglycemia is observed with the sulfonyl ureas which are long acting. For example, chlorpropamide is the first generation sulfonyl urea which is having the long duration of action. Similarly, second generation drugs like the gliburide, glipizide, they are also long acting thereby they can increase the hypoglycemia. And second important side effect is the weight gain. Normally, oral hypoglycemic agent should not affect the weight but the sulfonyl ureas can increase the weight which may indirectly affect the diabetic complications. So weight gain is one of the limitation of the sulfonyl ureas. And third one is the allergic reactions. Whenever a sulfonyl group is there, the drugs may produce few of the allergic reactions. So these drugs can produce few of the hypersensitive reactions like the skin rashes and urticaria, just like the sulfonamides. Other side effects include nausea and vomiting. And these drugs can also produce some gastrointestinal upset resulting in the flatulence, decrease in the appetite as well as constipation otherwise they can also produce a diarrhea and at a toxic dose sulfonyl ureas can produce a bone marrow toxicity and which results in the bone marrow depression, anemia and neutropenia. So this bone marrow toxicity is observed only at a toxic dose, at normal dose this is rarely observed. What are the drug interactions? Many of the drugs can interact with the sulfonyl ureas. Few of the drugs can increase the action of sulfonyl ureas and they can interact by different mechanisms. First one is the protein displacement. When these sulfonyl ureas are displaced from the protein binding sites, their levels are going to be increased which results in the increased action resulting in the hypoglycemia. Similarly, second mechanism is the enzyme inhibition. When the metabolic enzymes are inhibited, 
Again, the levels of sulfonylureas are increased, resulting in the hypoglycemia. And few of the drugs can also decrease the urinary excretion, thereby they increase the actions of sulfonylureas. So drugs like sulfonamides, because they are in the structural similarity, they can compete for the protein binding sites. Similarly, other drugs like the salicylates, clofibrate, which is an anti-hyperlipidemic agent, and phenylbutazone, all these drugs produce a protein displacement. And similarly, if you have the drugs like the MAO inhibitors and azole antifungals, can inhibit the metabolism of the sulfonylureas. And other drugs like the probenzaid, sulfinpyrazone and allopurinol, all these drugs can interact at the excretion where they are going to reduce the excretion of the sulfonylureas resulting in the increased hypoglycemic action of sulfonylureas. Similarly, if you have the drug interactions involve the decreased action of the sulfonylureas resulting in the hyperglycemia. For example, if you have the drugs like the corticosteroids, glucocorticoids, similarly thysaid diuretics as well as loop diuretics and if you have the oral contraceptives, all these types of drugs can increase the glucose levels by their intrinsic property. So all these drugs can increase the hyperglycemia. Thereby they can oppose the actions of the sulfonylureas resulting in the decreased action of the sulfonylureas. Similarly, if you have the drugs like rifampicin, phenytoin, these are the enzyme inducers. They can induce the metabolic enzymes. Thereby they can increase the metabolism of the sulfonylureas resulting in their decreased action. So these two drugs can reduce the action of sulfonylureas resulting in the hyperglycemia. So that's about these sulfonylureas. These drugs are the oral hypoglycemic agents which are having a sulfonyl moiety attached with the urea. And based on the substitution, these sulfonylureas are classified as first generation as well as second generation. First generation drugs are old generation which are mainly include chlorpropamide and tolbutamide. But the second generation are mainly gliburide, glipizide and glimepiride. This gliburide is also called as glibenclamide. All these drugs are going to inhibit the ATP sense to potassium channels at the beta cells by binding to the sulfonylurea receptors which are closely associated with the ATP sense to potassium channels. By binding to the sulfonylurea receptors, these drugs inhibit the ATP sense to potassium channels, thereby increase the insulin release from the beta cells which can control the glucose levels within the plasma. And since these drugs are going to increase the glucose from the beta cells, they can produce the hypoglycemia as one of the important side effect. And they can also promote the weight gain as well as they can also produce the allergic reactions. At a toxic dose, these drugs can produce uh, bone marrow depression. And at a normal dose, they can produce few of the gastrointestinal disorders like the constipation, flatulence or even diarrhea. And these drugs show drug interaction with many of the drugs. Drugs like sulfuramide, salicylates, clofibrate, phenylbutazone can produce a protein displacement. And few of the drugs like MAO inhibitors and azole antifungals can inhibit the metabolism of these drugs. And few of the drugs like the allopurinol, sulfinpyrazone and probenzaid can reduce the excretion of sulfonylureas. And all these drugs can increase the action of sulfonylureas resulting in the hypoglycemia. Similarly, if you have the drugs like the glucocorticoids, thysaid diuretics, loop diuretics, as well as uh, oral contraceptives are increasing the glucose levels and rifampicin and phenytoin are going to increase the metabolism of sulfonylureas. So all these drugs can reverse the action of sulfonylureas resulting in the hyperglycemia. So these are the important drug interactions observed with the sulfonylureas. So that's about the sulfonylureas. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.